Hello everybody and welcome back to the Snapless channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about why the Snapchat Spectacles will become your next go-to holiday camera. So hello and welcome back to the Snapless channel. My name is Carl Lightning and I'm going to be helping you guys out in the social media community get the most out of your social media. And today's video is about the Snapchat Spectacles which are cameras that you can actually wear take Snapchats and post them onto your story. Now just to clear the air, I'm not being paid or sponsored by Snapchat to make this video. I'm a big fan of the Snapchat Spectacles and have over two years of experience using the devices, Series 1 and Series 2 of them. So I'd like to give my opinion, my personal opinion, on why I think you should grab yourself a pair if you haven't got them. Now on the Snapchat channel, we've done various awesome videos with the Spectacles. We've pushed them to the max Quite literally, we attached them to a drone to see what would aerial shots we could film with them. And we also attached two to the same account to see what would happen if you had two spectacles synchronized to the same account. Now today's video is not testing them to the max, but showing you why you should actually use them while you're on holiday. So to start off with today's video, we are just going to compare the two versions of Snapchat Spectacles that we have at the moment. We've got the first generation and the second generation. These will just be the stock models, not the designer models. We'll talk about those after. To start with the comparison between the first generation and the second generation, we're actually going to look at the case that they come in. Now you can see just by the camera shot that we have here that the case on the first generation is a lot bigger than the second generation. Now that was one of the perks to the upgraded one. These actually fit in your pocket in comparison to this block of cheese here that you sort of have to have a special bag for to carry around with. Now if you don't know, the glasses do need to be charged and these cases do charge them when they're not being worn on your face. Now, actually looking at the spectacles, they have a very funky look. Even generation one to generation two, they have the same look. And if I put them on myself, you'll see they have a very circular looking face. Now these come in three colors. Both generations have their own variants of these colors. Obviously the black, there is a coral and a teal for the first generation. And then there's a dark black and onyx and a ruby sort of red that goes for the second generation. And if you're not happy with these sorts of designs, you can actually buy the more designer looking ones, which have got names like Nico and Veronica. These look like this and they're meant to be more designer and less, let's say, funky. Now just a quick comparison between Generation 1 and Generation 2. Obviously Generation 2 had a little bit of a slimming on the lens side of things, so between the glasses and the camera there's a slightly slimmer bracket. You didn't feel it on the first ones, but it's a little bit slimmer, which makes it more lightweight. There is also upgraded hardware in the second generation, you would expect this, because you want to make the second product better than the first. And you get dual microphones on the second generation in comparison to the single microphone. It's not as much noticeable if you're not a hardcore Spectacles fan, but it does make a slight difference in audio, especially with voices on a windy day. And these ones do shoot better video. It's only just a little bit better, but it is slightly more HD. Again, unless if you're a film fanatic, you probably won't notice it because the Spectacles give you a fantastic shot. Now, two main points that make the second generation better than the first. These are actually water resistant. They're not waterproof, but you can go in the swim pool, the bath, the shower, wherever you like to take them. They do take a good beating of water. Now, like I said earlier on in the video, the cases do make a difference, especially when traveling around, because this one is easier to carry around with you than the larger case from generation one. And it's definitely really weird when you first use the spectacles underwater because again, technology and water just doesn't seem like it goes together. And that's the best thing about Snapchat Spectacles too. The second generation being water resistant just gives you those extra good shots. I actually tried these out when I went on holiday in the pool. We also went down a water slide using them. This is not a perspective you'd be able to share with any other camera. Now the one thing about these spectacles is because they're a pair of glasses people don't expect them to have a camera on but please respect people's privacies when you do use them. Obviously don't use them in public bathrooms because I think one that's against the law over here and two it's really privacy invading and a bit wrong to do so obviously use these and be careful. Now you've got familiar with what Snapchat spectacles are, we're now going to talk about why these are the best holiday companion you can have. Now one thing I found really nice about the Snapchat spectacles when traveling around, especially in the airports, is getting a camera in and out with all the equipment is quite heavy to lug around. So these were kind of nice to just stick on your face and if you don't know how the spectacles work, one click, it then films your video, you look around, and anything that you look at is sort of filmed. Now Snapchat Spectacles do have a wide angle, which means they capture a lot of video, so you can do some really good shots of walking, running, cycling, and because they're glasses, I mean, they don't come off very easy, so you're not gonna drop them as well. 
Another good point to think about with these Snapchat spectacles, because if you do want to share your journeys, obviously when you're traveling around, battery life is quite crucial. So these will actually minimize how much screen time you use, which is going to lower, will actually give you more battery to use for the more important stuff, like posting them to your story and letting people know what's going on. One feature that I would mention that's definitely changed the way I think about Snapchat spectacles. If you'd asked me a year ago would I use these as a holiday camera, I would say no. Just because they were quite inclusive to Snapchat, literally all you could do was post it to your story and send it to your friends. Exporting them was just poor. But recently they've actually updated it so now you can export into widescreen, square formats, or keep the circle orientation that the camera obviously films in. And I just find this is nicer because now going onto other social medias, instead of taking a GoPro or another action camera, abroad because if you're not going to use the full potential out of them they are sort of a waste of money. These can now be exported into the square and widescreen format which give you the same sort of quality at a very easier standard to use. Now because of this new exporting update the content from these spectacles now looks pretty awesome on mobile devices so posting on Instagram and Twitter the perspectives that you can post now are pretty awesome. You don't need any high-end action camera you can just use these spectacles for those perspectives. You can also save them into your camera roll and if you've got an iPhone these automatic videos that Apple make for you now with just your holiday photos and videos, they fit quite nicely in there. The only time that you'll find Snapchat spectacles start to fall down in sort of quality is when you're trying to edit a 1080p video and if you've got big cameras like a DSLR or even like a GoPro you'll find that they do sort of lag behind in the quality but they're not designed for that. The question you want to ask yourself is you know where am I going to post these? If you are just the consumer just going to put it on social media these may be your answer to the question. Instead of forking out like 300, 400 quid on a professional camera, which you're only going to use a couple of times a year. So just question yourself, you know, what do you want? Do you want the professional side or do you want to share the moment at a decent price? So that is my personal opinion of why these Snapchat spectacles are one of my traveling companions, especially when I go on my holidays because they are great cameras to take away with you. Now, if you just want to clear the air and understand which ones are water resistant and which ones aren't, just in case you don't know, any spectacles with the yellow rings around the camera and LEDs are not water resistant. So these ones will break if you take them anywhere near water. Wouldn't risk it because they are again expensive, but these ones here, the Spectacles 2, the second generation are water resistant, which means you can't go deep sea diving, but they can go to probably about two meters. Do not quote me on that. Snapchat Spectacles don't even recommend taking them anywhere near deep water, but uh, of course they are water resistant. And as you can see by this video on screen, I'm not scared anymore of taking them in there. So to wrap up today's video, I'd just like to say a massive thank you for you all to tune in. I will leave some perspectives on screen to show you the adventures that I've had with these Snapchat spectacles. And if you don't know, the Snap This channel is about to hit 10,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed and you've enjoyed today's video, if you can subscribe, that will really help us reach our milestone. If you enjoyed today's video as well, leave us a like and let us know in the comment section below if you own a pair of spectacles, whether they be the first gen or the second gen, because it is nice to know what's going on in the Snapchat community. So with all that said, we'll catch you in the next video.